Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Picked up a bunch of trade paperbacks recently. Jimmy, we're going to get into all of them and implore the audience. Uh, how do we cover some of this stuff, man? See what the, the biggest hitters are, and that'll be uh, the closest future episode, man. All of this will be covered eventually. First, I want to invite you guys to like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new vids are available. That mitigates the kayfabe effect, and I think that effect is going to come into effect in this video with some of the stuff that we're going to show off. What that means is that uh, we show off books, we talk about books, we praise books, and those books disappear off the internet by lunchtime to dinner time that same day. Uh, if they are available, they become prohibitively expensive. The people who get the cheapest copies off of eBay and Amazon are notified from our videos and can scoop them up uh, really quickly. At WonderCon a couple weeks back, I saw that a lot of uh, dealers at their booths had comics in slabs that said, as seen on cartoonist <laughs> yes. kayfabe. How cool is that shit, Jimmy? Watch these videos to the end. That lets YouTube know that uh, these videos are good quality content for other comic book loving YouTube uh, viewers. Pushes our videos out to new people. Helps us grow our numbers. We just hit 60,000 subscribers. We humbly thank you for that. Uh, but we are looking for 600,000. So we're only about 10% of the way there. Uh, Jimmy, we had the uh, the Big Ides sale here in in town. Uh, it always happens uh, the same time every year. Like uh, the week the weekend before tax time. I wonder if they have some kind of tax credit, some kind of gimmick like this. <laughs> but uh, after we pay our tax bills and you realize that, man, could have shaken off a couple bit, couple more uh, tax write-offs or whatever. The accountant is like, you got a YouTube channel. You better go bone up on some episode fodder then, motherfucker. So I went down there. Uh, you Fif and I 50th anniversary sell, by the way. 50. So uh, happy birthday to I. It's 50 years, man. Not too many comic shops celebrate 50 years. Breaking kayfabe, uh, we recorded, uh, the last time we recorded, you mentioned like, yeah, the sale's going on now, and I thought it was going on the 12th. We wrapped up, and I left the house <laughs> almost with you, and yes. I spent hundreds of dollars at that place. This is a sample of the trade paperback stuff that I ended up scooping up, and once again, I want to implore the, the audience, man, like, whatever gets the biggest pop, whatever gets the biggest reaction is going to be pushed uh, at the top of the list of the reading pile for us to do episodes about. Uh, the Fighting American books and, and the Boys Ranch, these ones that were being pimped out in those 1990s, those mid-90s Marvel comics, they had them there, and, like, the I'd sell is crazy, people, because it's, like, half off. And it's not half off cover price. It's half off their already used books prices. So each of these was like seven fifty or something like that. These are awesome books. I got hold of these pretty early on, probably at a different comic book sale, you know, because I was interested. Fighting American just sounds super cool. Yeah. And Boys Ranch is that kid gang comic that like I would read early stuff about Kirby, and this was considered one of his high marks. Yes. And uh, I can tell you both are very readable, uh, interesting books. So these are these are something I'd be eager to revisit. Yeah, I remember seeing both of these in that um, Mike Thibodeau, Greg Theakston. Mm -hmm. uh, That's probably where book. they crossed my path. Yeah. And, you know, this also points out the Joe Simon keeping the copyrights, you know, uh, reserving those copyrights and then being able to partner with a publisher like Marvel. This is not property Marvel owns. Yeah. This is Joe Simon, Jack Kirby property. So really cool to see this in print and a nice, nice treatment. Really interesting. Cause like you see the ads for this, right. And then it would be like the next year where Rob gets the, Yes. Gets the copy or, or gets the license, and then you see Steve from Platt fighting American comics. Ed McGinnis. Th th those are some good, fun comics, but uh, you're right. Like, talk about a good promo for a book like this. Unbelievable, man. So, these are high on my reading list. Anyhow, full stop. Yeah, go Golden Age Kirby. Jimmy, I went down to Jules Pfeiffer vein. This is awesome. Uh, Tantrum is a book that we talked about with uh, Warren Bernard when we were kind of. Uh, breaking kayfabe about Contract with God being the the first mm -hmm. graphic novel on Comics Journal's top uh, hundred comics list as well. You know, I mean, this is a cartoonist that has a career. Yes, if this proceeds, uh, Contract with God, it's only by like a year or two. You know, it came out like around seventy eight, I think. But Joe Pfeiffer ha had a big career in comics already up to that point, and he's one of those iconoclastic Renaissance men. Men, uh, you know, he had I think six six six. Like this is like that long. Uh, Village Voice yes. uh, strip that he did. I like seeing these uh, collections too because 666, the one that I know, is a paperback. You know, it's this big, so it's it's reformatted for these different uh, 
over the decades for whatever format makes sense at the time of publication. And it's so interesting to me the way great comics can fit. You know, you see peanuts in those paperbacks throughout the years. So very cool. Projected to be a 15 volume set, but I don't think that that happened. I think I think we got three and then Gary was like, ah, damn, the audience just ain't trying to buy some Jules Fife for shit. Well, no shame in that because it's happened with uh, Ernie Bushmiller's Nancy as well. So yeah. bring that stuff back, Fanographics. Come on. And see, they started from the beginning too. So, so like you're getting his like straight up comic book looking stuff from the really early days. Really interesting to see him draw in this style. Like not a style I associate with him. But he did work with Will Eisner he in did. the early days on Spirit, like the Spirit on the Moon comics. Yeah, wrote this stuff, man. And he basically drew the roughs and thumbnails like in this kind of fashion. You could see them in uh, comics and sequential art. And seeing what his finish looks like over top of it is interesting. But it does feel forced. But I think that's retrospective eyes because we know what his more natural style is. Yeah, And it's moving more in this direction. Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comics that Ed Piscor and I make. So here's a rundown of what is available. Hulk, Grand Design, Monster, and Madness, a retelling of the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk, is available in comic shops everywhere right now, including some very cool variant covers by Peach Momoko, Jeff Darrow, Ed McGinnis, Marcos Martin, and Cartoonist Kayfabe's own Ed Piscor, in addition to my covers. You can also find... The Deadly Scroll Live, Street Angel, and a variety of oversized hardcovers from Image Comics, Homeless Ninja on a Skateboard, and The Plain Janes, uh, one of the first young adult graphic novels published here in the United States about a bunch of high school artists that get in trouble around their town doing public art. From Ed Piscor, Red Room, the antisocial network collecting the first series of uh, Red Room comics, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit, Trigger Warnings, Red Room's second season now in stores. Two or three issues available already and uh, a fourth one on the way coming soon. Banned in uh, 22 countries and 10 comic book shops, but those shops will still order these comics. You just may have to ask for them by name. They may come uh, out from under the counter whenever you ask for those wrapped in a brown paper bag. He's also the originator of the Grand Design series. There are three oversized Beautiful volumes of X-Men Grand Design currently available wherever books and comics are bought and sold, as well as Hip Hop Family Tree, four oversized volumes of this hip hop history and available in deluxe box sets, very nice box sets, and WYSIWYG, A History of Computer Hacking, available wherever books and comics are sold. And now back to our regular scheduled programming. Love seeing these kind of comics too. Like this is so divorced from what I would see in the direct market. But yeah. of course there are places where these are comics. You know, New Yorker, Absolutely. Di different audiences, different expectations, and glad that it's uh, that it exists. I think this guy has freaking Academy Awards for stuff like yes. Carnal Knowledge and, and other screenwriting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, tremendous talent. To me the culmination would be tantrum. You know, like that you could see easily see this being a big episode for us, man. Where it's uh, kind of like a reverse story of Big, yeah. where where this guy just can't handle the, the pressures of his adult life and wishes himself back into a state of childhood. <laughs> yeah, something that I, I think probably a lot of us can relate to <laughs> these days. The Piranha Press version of why I hate Saturn. Super cool, and also a good segue from I, I think from Jules Pfeiffer to this style. It's almost like a uh, a '90s version of some of the cartooning that you would see in Jules Ab Pfeiffer's absolutely, work. Absolutely, man, has that like beautiful like deadline that's like that's just sort of all you need interesting use of like dialogue placement and stuff these were early graphic novels yeah you know, this is a guy who could had the chops to do the marvel dc comics the, the rigorous kind of style but was also interested in more human human stories and alternative comics every single piece of this is considered and designed for for uh the purposes of, of this book and i love this piece on the back where it's it's the boy and girl character each selling the comic but in their own way She's highfalutin and is talking about socially redeeming co uh, contemporary fiction. He's like, with pictures. And then he's like, it's a 200-page comic book. Well, friends, you know, that book is finally here. Why hate Saturn? A new graphic novel from Piranha Press. 200-page comic book. Like, just like... Yeah. And, and then he's like, but I sell more copies than you. <laughs> so good, man. Early so days of uh, graphic novels, especially at a Marvel and DC publisher. And this one is a substantial book. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not that 60-page... 
uh, graphic novel that, that we would see. It's I think this pages. is on your comics journal's uh, top 100. Yeah, and you know what? I confess, never read it. Oh, excellent. Yeah. yeah, I look forward to revisiting this one. This was one that probably when I started to look beyond Marvel DC, this crossed my path at some point, so it'll be a fun one to look into. Whenever we were chatting, man, uh, about about uh the sales going on i was like dude i know exactly what i'm going for when <laughs> i go down there you were very clandestine about it too because because i was uh <laughs> i was eyeballing them uh for months like every time i would go down there i would see okay they're still there they're still there they haven't moved if they're there whenever the sales going on and it's 50 percent off that's when i'm going to strike and get those bruno Premiani doom patrol comics i believe this is the run i yeah. believe this is the entire story and you can see i'm uh 100 pages in so far he uh so arnold drake writing uh, a very noteworthy creator in comics history outspoken ahead of his time in a lot of ways bruno primiani on art um i guess a, an italian illustrator great with blacks and whites beautiful art really yeah. strong yeah yeah and, and some real imaginative layouts and stuff yeah there's there's a lot in this comic that i like i i picked these up whenever they first came were first published it's kind of like marvel's essentials yeah uh you know affordable but the black and white art is really strong you know an era whenever they cared about black and white art and looks great the characters look good i like the way they look like normal people you know that lady looks like a normal woman uh, except that she's bigger than the rocket. <laughs> but a cool gimmick for that reason. It's this kind of shit, dude. That's great. Yeah, this this character design, awesome. We got a lot of notes on our Atomics episode about Mike Allred that this is something to look at as an influence on Mike Allred, so pretty cool. And Bruno's name comes up. Uh, Brian Ballin shoot interviews. He's very good. It's like se several people. Uh, it, it's because like it, it will have the elements that you... Think of his homeworks of that DC, that DC Silver Age style, but just far more funky shit goes down. He's a very comics. elegant artist, too. Um, every now and then I'll see glimpses and think like Kevin Nolan yes. or something, you know, like it's very comes cared for. And look, great black and whites. Yeah, Jaime's a, another one. Yeah, so... Got Fun complete, and weird, these comics. Absolutely. Got the complete version, like, the complete run of these. Contemporary and, of uh, original X-Men. It's true. Yeah, yeah. And he's got, you know, the Professor X fella, man. He's got the wheelchair gimmick going on. And then to round things out, uh, I actually didn't grab these from, from Ides, but I've been sitting on these for a while. My recent Alan Moore pickups... I've never read any of these comics, man. Uh, I didn't even know about them, really, when they were like on the racks. I would see Providence, but just like whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, fell victim to the Amazon like suggested book thing and saw that there were like th there's a whole Kevin Nolan comic that I've never heard of with Alan Moore. Kevin O'Neill. Ke Kevin O'Neill, yeah, yeah. Cinema, a Purgatoria. So I, I don't know much about any of these things, man. Yeah. Pick them I wonder up on if the this limb. is Avatar's like last published series. I don't know if they're still actively publishing. I do know that these were, uh, like, I did just some quick Google searching on them. There were Kickstarters for each of these. Yeah, interesting. So I've been putting together a uh, run of Providence. I think I'm missing issue three for those watching at home. We P do have a P.O. Box. P.O. Box 3071, <laughs> Monohole, PA 15120. Uh, I'm a... I'm a Lovecraft fan. Fell down that rabbit hole several years back and, and scooped up everything I could, read read everything I could more than once. Uh, so to kind of check out the Alan Moore League of Extraordinary Gentlemen Lovecraft kind of tale, I'm on board for this, man. You know, I definitely want to check this out. And I think... Yeah, he's pretty good with a 12-issue series that he did. Uh, <laughs> some other 12-issue series. So. Yeah, I think he wet his whistle on this one right here, man. It's Neonomicon. And I read, like, the first five, ten pages of it. And just, like, the layout of the thing. Uh, actually, not this. But but this right here. Yeah, the Neonomicon. Uh, you could tell that the writing is, like, super tight. And it's Jason Burroughs, dude gives Alan Moore exactly what he's asking for. You know, sort of no more, no less. It's it feels like it's a very static kind of kind of style that makes me think that like underneath this is probably a, like, I don't know, Google SketchUp buildings or photos or, or something. He did a Punisher Max not too long ago and there was an interesting uh interview with him, I think on TCJ, I think that's where I saw it, 
but an artist that's paid his dues, you yes. know, has been making comics for, geez, like two decades. And, and whenever the Alan Moore script comes in, I feel like uh, that's probably a pretty good day. Yeah, man, for sure. I've also heard this one is very disturbing. I, I've heard other pe people say it, and I have a copy of Neonomicon too. So again, man, make some noise in the comments and direct us to what you want to see us uh, read and talk about here. Yeah, so Jimmy, I spent... Lots of money there. <laughs> like I like I got a bunch of quarter comics. I I got uh, hit up their their dollar section that was like what sixty percent off. What are some of the things that you scooped up uh, at the at the? I sale? got Dave Cooper's pillowy book. Yeah, you know that giant art retrospect. And man, is that thing nice! We it's lavish. That. It's like I don't know four hundred pages or something. It has comics and paintings and drawings and just if you love Dave Cooper, that book is for you. It's amazing. I'm trying to think of what else I picked up. Um, Heard you, heard you guys were there for three hours. <laughs> we went through quite a bit. Yeah, we went through <laughs> quite a bit. I, I, But, you know, this this was a weekend. Chris Pitzer has guested uh, for a week on Cartoonist Kayfabe. I think we hit four or five comic shops um, that weekend when yeah. he was in town. So I ended up with a pile of comics, and I can't remember exactly what came from where. But uh, one of my big scores was a big run of heavy metals. Nice. The first three years of heavy metals got a big, big chunk of those. So, yeah, some cool comics uh, on the horizon for the Cartoonist Kayfabe Faithful. Yeah, super fun. So, so like money was spent. Ides got some loot from us. Uh, this is just a subsection of the books that I got, the trade paperbacks from from the shop. Let us know in the comments uh, what resonates with you the most. Uh, that will sort of supersede the others in the to read pile and make for some uh, cartoonist kayfabe episodes in the nearest future, man. Uh, Jimmy, you good to go? Yes. Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell, we'll notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, man? Hulk Grand Design Monster and Hulk Grand Design Madness should both be in your local comic shop if they haven't sold out already. It's a retelling of the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk through my eyes and hands, and uh, perfect for the longtime Hulk reader or the first-time Hulk comic book reader. Uh, also, join me on patreon.com slash jimrug. Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue one, two, and potentially issue number three are on the sands as we speak. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. And uh, you can get those comics at my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Three bucks for the archive there to read them before they hit paper. Uh, there's more than 200 pages up in the archive right now. You can order and pre-order these comics uh, at the link in the link tree in the description below by way of Fantagraphics. Uh, found at better uh, comic stores everywhere. It is banned in 20-something countries, so sorry for you if it's banned in yours. And it is banned in 10 comic shops. But don't worry, those comic shops aren't going to exist much longer. Jimmy, what else do we have out there? Subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. That's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, dude, we'll be on our way. Read more comics.